Hey everyone, welcome to Inverse Social Hour. My name is Jake, I'm the Senior Entertainment Editor at Inverse. I'm really happy to be here with Rob Liefeld. He is here to talk about his new comic, Snake Eyes, from G.I. Joe. And we're gonna talk about a bunch of other stuff, probably some Marvel stuff too. Obviously, Rob is one of the greatest Marvel comics creators of all time. Deadpool, Domino, X-Force, Cable. He's a legend. I'm old, that, that's code word for old. You look great. It's the drugs. So just to start off the social hour, maybe uh, is there anyone you'd like to toast? Someone, someone or something that you think is worth shouting out? Josh Brolin, uh, an amazing actor, whether he was ever Cable or Thanos. Uh, as I get older and I realize he worked with Ridley Scott, Oliver Stone, mm-hmm. you know, Denis Nouveau, uh, the guy, and, and going back to Goonies. Yeah. And I think yesterday, honestly, was the anniversary of a skateboard movie he did called rad so josh brolin you're my dude love you man congratulations he's got baby number two on 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 the way with his wife so there's my shout out i tried to keep it short what's a canceled show or comic or movie that you would love to see rebooted and brought back my favorite film franchise is not star wars and i need more of it and i'm not crazy with what they did with it i think they need to do more and that is the planet of the apes the original Five movies informed. Remember, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> I love okay. the first Planet of the Apes. So, so the, uh, which one, Heston or the first reboot? Heston. Yeah, no, no. Oh, Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Like the one with James Franco, the first one they did, yeah. where everybody wildly was wiped out by a pandemic at the last. Dude, we <laughs> like humans. I was rooting for Charlton Heston mm. and and James Franco in the sequel, okay? So, uh, 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 James Franciscus, very close name. James Franciscus, okay? These guys, the, it, is it the Matt Reeves movies? Yeah, Matt Reeves. Now he's doing Batman. Too many monkeys. <laughs> Too much time with the monkeys. And I do not need the Ten Commandments with um, a, a monkey leading everyone out of slavery um, um, set my people free. And I think Woody Harrelson was like Pharaoh. Google the Planet of the Apes cartoon that was on in 1974, 1975, wow. Saturday morning. Apes are flying helicopters. Apes are in Jeeps. They're in tanks. They, they went, because it's a cartoon, you can do all that, you yep. know, you can put them in submarines. And I'm like, I need my apes in gear with giant yep rifles oh, not yeah. riding horseback <laughs> i want the clothes the armor the i want the planes yeah under the apes sure. more love, let's talk about snake eyes because i know that's sure. why what is it about um snake eyes the character that appeals to you so much i know you're a big fan of him snake eyes is a lifelong bucket list dream again i mean i'm just in this in this stage where uh, I like the work that I'm doing. I like where my career is at 34 years in, and I'm trying to scratch things off the bucket list uh, because at 34 years into a career, every day is not a given. It's, it's you know, you got to earn it, and, and you don't know what tomorrow holds. The entire franchise is my first love. It's the first toy yeah. I remember. Now, you know what? I'm going to do one of these again. I, I apologize. Hang on, hang on. I'll be right back. Here I go. There you go. I love the Deadpool poster behind you. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes. And as I come into view, boom, boom. This is 1974's G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Yeah. Okay, this is the selling point, all right? And the one right after this had an eagle eye. Now, we can't keep a good man in a box, all right? But you just have to understand here. This is how guys my age were introduced to Mighty Joe, Okay. Um, he has the real hair. It's so weird. Oh, it's so creepy. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like fuzzy. Real knitted in hair. Um, and he's got his sidearm. GI Joe was introduced to me as uh, part of an action adventure team. They had redone the franchise. It couldn't be military based anymore because of Vietnam. They had to move away from military. So even though he has the fatigues, he was part of the right here. You can see on his chest, it's an arrow slash a, the adventure team. This was my favorite, let's just say it, doll. It was my favorite doll, okay? They, they weren't action figures yet. We, we won't get to these, you know, for a while yet, okay? So, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a young teenager now and I'm, I'm like this new reboot of GI Joe is, is fantastic. The first cover, they're all leaping at you, but snake eyes is introduced. And here's the deal. Here's what you need to know. I had not. And to my knowledge, no one had encountered a pop culture figure that had a pistol and a katana. Okay. This will be a winning combination for the Liefeld imagination. But Snake Eyes was rocking the katana and the pistol. So you're like, is he a ninja? Is he a soldier? It's, it's like this newfangled, and there's no doubt why he exploded to become the biggest, um, you know, the very most popular Joe. And so that's my history of just being a fan with yeah. all things Joe. Yeah, I think... You've, like you've said before, that Snake Eyes design uh, it helped probably helped inspire a few of your other characters. Oh, it, it 100%. Snake Eyes moved like a ninja, mm. carried pistols, rifles, guns, always had that katana. Um, and so, again, it informed what I wanted to do with Deadpool, yep. who has katanas and pistols, everybody. There's no X-Force without G.I. <laughs> Joe. There's no X-Force without G.I. Joe. They are incredibly impactful. Oh. Who would win in a fight, Snake Eyes or Deadpool? Okay, so you guys know that Deadpool can exist with half his, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I would love, I always want to give the other guy the benefit of the doubt, but how do you kick, kill a guy who can't die? Let's say Snake Eyes moves into his double sword move and, his, and he decapitates Deadpool. Deadpool just goes, no, 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 no. I will regrow shortly and then we will meet again and you won't be able to do that move on me again. And eventually you're going to be out of moves if you're Snake Eyes or like, I'm sorry, Batman. He kills Batman. If he kills Batman, he's killing Snake Eyes. My, my boy continues to reign supreme. Is this a surprise to anyone? You've created an unkillable character so well you know i pilfered that wolverine healing factor man dear marvel can i have the healing i can okay thank you click it was that easy you mentioned uh you said sort of gi joe is on your bucket list of characters you yeah to. are there any other uh characters or uh franchises that are on that bucket list yes sir there are uh there is some obscure archie comics characters called <laughs> the comet the shield the fly they um, were together briefly called the Crusaders. Now, uh, and Jack Kirby, Joe Simon, mm -hmm. guys who created Captain America and obviously Kirby and all his Marvel creations, they were instrumental. They, they, they've tried to relaunch them a couple times. And I've always had this kind of, you know, old heroes thing. I think everybody since Watchmen, when Alan Moore took what most people don't know were the Charlton heroes. And if you look at his original plot, for the first issue of Watchmen, where Rorschach was really the question, and Owl Man was Blue Beetle. And then at the end, right before he was to publish it, DC said, you know, we're going to keep these characters and launch them all separately. You can't use Blue Beetle, Captain Comet, Peacemaker. The original Watchmen was not who killed the comedian. It was, it's in the omnibus. Alan shows it. It was who killed the Peacemaker. But Alan went, oh, okay, I can't use Charlton characters anymore, so now I'll make it kind of an echo. And he created his own characters, which we now know as the Watchmen. But yeah. that was done specifically with Charlton characters. So Charlton, Archie, they all have this library that has not evolved with time. So that's really obscure. That's like the most like, wow, Rob, you really are nuts. You want to do that? I do. I, I, think, I think I can make it work. I mean, but that may be my giant comeuppance, right? <laughs> that may be like the that may be the face plant of my life, but I want to try it. And the guys at Marvel know um, if we ever dance again, I would love to do Fantastic Four because that's the original. That's the best uh, group of characters Marvel has. So there's my bucket list. Those are great, and I yeah. I gotta look up these Archie characters. Yeah, the Crusaders, the Fly, <laughs> uh, the Shield. They're great yeah, superheroes. That's awesome. Who are a few people you'd love to have a drink with? Uh, a few drinking buddies, alive, dead, fictional. Give me two people. I'd love to hang out with Jack Kirby more. You guys, if he had lived to see the Marvel Universe come to life. Yeah. And the guy who gave you the way all of this looks and feels, he would be the most adored. Uh, I was lucky enough to hang out with him and to know him and to visit with him and bake bread with him and his wife. So more time with Jack Kirby. And then um, 
I would love to tour with the Eagles in 1975. I, they're, they're great. Don Henley has a voice of an angel. Obviously, Glenn Fry has, is past, but um, I've seen them in concert more than any band in my lifetime. Again, go listen to Eagles music. There were these things. They were called bands. They made music. They didn't sing in the whatever boxes. Okay. I mean, Jack Kirby, obviously, is such an important creator. Maybe yes. not as well known as he should be. Is there anything? Not at all. Anything that no one knows about Jack Kirby that you know that you can share with the world? I just, you know, no. I mean, look, the, the man was the most prolific comic book creator of any age. He did three issues a month. He mm -hmm. would have 60 plus pages a month. You wow. know, when he came back to Marvel in 1975, he had Captain America. He had Black Panther. He had... um. Uh, uh, Machine Man. When he was at DC, he did Mr. Miracle, The New Gods, The Forever People. The guy was a machine. And when I said to him, Jack, how did you do this? He said, Rob, I had to pay the bills. I had a family. And he said, 60 pages was necessary. He even looked at me like, this is what you do when you got to make ends meet. Because comic books weren't paying massive page rates, you know? Yep. Let's say Jack was getting $20 a page, right? And wow. so in 1967, 1968, he had to do 60 of them plus covers. Wow. So that's, I don't think people quite appreciate, and there has never been another person who was anywhere near as prolific. And he didn't short shrift any page. They were packed. He would have to do on three to four pages a day. That is very difficult. It is a lot of work. Very Difficult. And again, behind me, I won't get them everywhere, giant tomes of his work. Yeah. I mean, um, an immense amount of page production. I'm going to ask about uh, Deadpool a bit. Last yeah. time you were pretty um, pessimistic about the future of the movies. There he is, Katana in hand. I think there's been some talk more recently that maybe there is a movie in writing. I know you've sort of spoken about what mm -hmm. Deadpool looks like with you or without you, obviously there's like that really yeah. embarrassing uh, so, Wolverine movie. But what's the latest on your thinking? So, so here's the deal. Um, I was honest with your audience. If there was never going to be another Planet of the Apes franchise or they were not going to make one for 10 years, I would so appreciate someone telling me to like, yeah. you should pump the brakes. Like there is no resentment. Deadpool okay. lives and always has lived on his own uh, merits. I mean, I've got banks, statues, video games. He's in all of their handheld games. So when I mention the movie, it upsets people. And I never meant to upset people. I think we talked like four months ago. Yeah, it's been a and, uh Yeah, nothing's changed. Here, here's what I want to, to communicate. Let's, let's, let's say I don't have any insider info at all because the angry Marvel, I don't know what you call them. They, they believe that they know everything. Let's just read the trades. We can all read deadline Hollywood or variety and Ryan Reynolds, the genius talent that he is, is much in demand. I'm just reading the, Hey, Ryan has another project. Hey, Ryan has another if every movie takes about nine months to film, yeah, and and those are on the table. Do the math, and oh, I, I'm good. I, I'm ready. I'm ready for the, and I get this all the time. I'll, I'll make the sound of the keyboards. <laughs> Life out was right. I was just looking out for. I was just looking out for my buddies. Mm -hmm. I was just looking out, trying to say, don't get your hopes up. Okay, now if he pops his head in a Marvel movie in the future and makes a joke, awesome. Yeah. Do we deserve more? Of course we do. My position has not changed. I don't believe you're going to see anything anytime soon. And there's no problem. Like that, that's fine. It makes sense to me. I think, I think you're right. And yeah, if he shows up in a few cameos, that's, that's something. Great. Last call, as we get ready to head out, What's a book or a movie or a show that you'd recommend to people? Something, something they should check out that you like. So a bunch. July 4th, 2014 came up on my memories. I took my son and we went and saw Snowpiercer. And he yeah. was blown away. And so we have been watching the TNT show, which I think has been 
phenomenal. Yeah, I am like- also watching season two of Hannah on Amazon, but yep. no piercer. Uh, looks like it's 10 episodes. Um, yeah. So now uh, this weekend. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that, those last three episodes, I think they crafted the world. Great. There's some great reflections of our own, when they all had face masks on two episodes ago, you're like, what the, what? Like this was in the can, right? Mm. Um, so yes, I, I would recommend Snowpiercer, Hannah. Amazon shows are, the production values are so amazing. The talent behind the scenes. I mean, again, I, I turn to my wife and I go, what should we expect? Jeff Bezos is a trillionaire. He's a trillionaire. <laughs> Of course these shows are going to look better. Jack Ryan, those shows look like big budget spy movies. So that's what I am enjoying. Yeah. You know, I really liked uh, another Amazon show, The Boys. You've seen it. The Boys, seen it. season two. Can't wait. Right? Awesome. Awesome. Expensive. Show. Jeff Bezos. Huge he's, project. <laughs> he's putting it on the screen. Leave us a tip. Do you have any tips for, for anyone watching this who maybe uh, aspires to make their own comics? So I'm going to say it again. I'm going to... Uh, I am reminded of when I got hired in comics and I had to go to a convention, I had to wait in line, I submitted my portfolio. Today, online, social media, the ability to tag someone, your work can be seen by everybody. Uh, Look at that kid who did special effects and Disney's now in business with him, giving him some sort of deal. I mean, we live in a world where if you are a talented artist um, and if you are a writer, you need an artist. It's a visual medium. make a short film, make a cartoon, draw sequential art and put it online. There has never been more ways to get noticed. I have hired numerous talents over the last decade from submissions through Twitter and Instagram, period. Artists have never had a better portal to expose their work ever. So that's just a mainstay. Is there anyone who did a huge favor to you in your life who, you know, maybe picked up the tab for you that you'd love to shout out? Um, man, so many. Look, uh, I had a great mentor in a man named Jim Valentino. Uh, he, we, we, he came from underground comics and was looking to break into the mainstream. And I was in the mainstream and he needed to change his kind of more underground style into mainstream superheroes. Cause that's where he wanted to go next. That, that made sense for his livelihood. He gave me, the entire 100 issues of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four and says, you're not getting what you need to out of this. Look at the storytelling. Look at the way he blocks every frame. Look at the way he gestures. Look at the amount of information that, that he puts in every panel. And also Jim taught me about music because um, he's much, he's about 15 years older than me. He gave me a stack of cassettes. Kids, there were cassettes. He said, this is the Beatles. These are all my Beatles albums. I recorded all of them. This is 1988. He goes, I know you're going to Palm Springs this weekend. Listen to this, all of it on the way there, on the way back. And so Jim furthered my career as an artist. He broadened my horizons as an artist. I mean, the storytelling alone, the lessons he sat down and said, dude, you don't need to do 10 panels to tell the story. You can do it in four. And that's the care of someone who wants to sit down and make you better and improve you. So thank you to Jim Valentino. All right, closing time at this fictional bar we've imagined. Closing time, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So what's, um, what's next? Snake Eyes is here. What's, is there another project coming up you're excited about? Okay, I'll tell you. What I did more than anything during the pandemic was I watched Westerns. There are channels that only play Westerns. Western television. I grew up with Gunsmoke, Rifleman, Alias Smith and Jones. My favorite movie of all space and time, never to be beaten, is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It is amazing. The modern buddy cop film was right then. They just put them in cop cars a decade later, right? I mean, those performances. So then I, uh, How the West Was Won. I mean, so many Westerns, Silverado. My next project is going to have a cowboy. Now, that cowboy may in a post-apocalyptic world where we've all died because of a pandemic. Um, Relevant. uh, I've just given it away. Now my last page reveal when you think he's in the Wild West and he's not. I just ruined it. 
But no, it's um, <laughs> I have been absorbing everything Western and Cowboys, and and I've been filling my sketchbook with how I would um, interpret that. So you heard it here first, kids. That's really you know, exciting. Well, I started with the super soldier from the future. Now I'm doing military soldiers. It makes sense. I'm going backwards to Cowboys. Okay. Does this guy have a name? I can't tell you. All right. I'll keep an eye out for it. It has a name. <laughs> there is a name of this project in my sketchbook. Great. Listen, Snake Eyes Dead Game is about weapons of war. Snake Eyes himself is a weapon of war. Our bad guy is the ultimate weapon of war. And there will be many weapons of war through history that Snake Eyes needs to encounter in order to assemble what is necessary. Because when he is arisen in the first issue, Boy. the shit hits the fan. I can't wait to check it out. That's, that's what, July 15th? July 15th. Please. How many issues? Five issues. Five issues. Five. Dead Game is a five-issue series. Wow. The first issue is 27 pages long. It is bigger than wow. your standard comic. And from there, uh, we, we have the rest. Every issue is 20 pages. Um, please check this out from your retailer. Thanks for having me back. I love this show. Um, I, I never miss it. I always check it out. It's, it's so fun. You do a great job. Thank you for having me. Um, your, your, your viewers are great. Thanks again for joining me on Inverse Social Hour. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, please check out uh, Snake Eye when it Snake Eyes when it comes out. And we've got more of these videos on YouTube, so please go to youtube.com slash inverse. And check I'll out my Rob Observations podcast. Rob Observations. It's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on Podbean. It's Rob Observations. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, it sounds fun. I'm, I'm gonna check that one out too. Rob's also on Instagram, he's great on Instagram, so check him out there. All right, thank you so much, everyone, hey, buddy. for watching. Uh, Thanks again for having me. Thanks, Rob. All right, see ya. Take care.